And finally, another important justification for network security is security awareness within the organization. This includes user education, in-place security procedures, training, and routine assessments. It's important that an organization be proactive versus reactive to ensure that a security compromise does not occur. And it's important that users within the organization understand the security procedures, understand how to react from a uh, social engineering attempt, or, uh, for example, receiving uh, email attachments that should not be opened. Uh, applying a security awareness program within the organization is an important step to ensure that uh, security breaches and um, security uh, mishaps do not occur. And now let's examine the three levels of security within an organization. These include the physical level, the policy level, and the system level. First, let's examine physical security. And this in, it refers to all physical access points within the network infrastructure. This includes entry points into the server room, for example, or include into the uh, network operations center. Network access, being able to bring a laptop in from a, an outside office or an outside location and plugging into the local network. Wireless networks. Many people do not consider wireless networks to be something physical because they're wireless and in the air. But essentially, wireless networks are very important that they are locked down and secure so that uh, unauthorized users are not able to access them. Again, server room controls, and that also applies to uh, entry points, as we mentioned above. Portable devices, such as Blackberries and PDAs, so that uh, if a portable device or a mobile phone is stolen or is lost, that it's locked and remotely um, erased. Also, uh, it's important to verify that equipment, such as laptops, desktops, and uh, servers, are secured within the environment. Now let's look at policy level security, and this is uh, security that is applied at the corporate governance or policy level and this includes passwords and strong password policies such as requiring eight character passwords for example with uh, one letter uh, one number and maybe one non-English character such as a pound sign or star sign also social engineering and we talked about social engineering earlier but making sure that uh, visitors and guests are required to check in with a receptionist, for example, that there are policies in place so that an outsider cannot just walk into an office environment and start extracting information or having uh, or being able to gain access to a server. Multiple layers of authentication. This includes, in addition to keying in a password at a workstation, using a fingerprint scanner also using a uh, USB token, for example, to verify that the user uh, can authenticate using one more than one level of authentication. Disaster recovery, and this is very important with regards to security, so that if there is some type of compromise, for example, if information is lost or if, a, um, if an intruder were to gain access to the network and delete information or if a virus were to erase information, within a network, it can easily be restored in the event of a disaster. And again, we see user education. That should be required for all users that are uh, hired as part of a um, initiation or human resources training. So this is a brief overview of policy level security. And here we have system level security. And this is security within the uh, desktop, the operating system, and the server level. This includes patch and update management. And that means that if that updates are applied to workstations on a scheduled basis, updates are tested and applied to servers and um, operating system software on a scheduled basis. Firewall security, verifying that the firewall is secure, and it's important in this case to do regular penetration testing of the firewall and to verify that the firewall is operational and functioning as expected. 
intrusion detection systems and this can also be part of a firewall or it can be a separate system to detect denial of service attacks remote attacks either intentional or unintentional malicious attacks maybe from a previous employee that may be disgruntled or just a, a random hacker that may be scanning the network to try to uh, find a system to compromise remote access security Today, many people telecommute, work from home, work from remote locations, and these networks are obviously insecure because they're used by children, by uh, household users, and they do not have the same level of security as a corporate environment. So it's important that the remote access policy and the remote access uh, controls are in place to make sure that there's a secure connection between the home and the work environment or any type of remote environment. Uh, this includes encryption between the two locations, uh, encryption on the user workstation, as well as um, um, only authorized access to the server that may be allowed. Encrypted media, and this is very important in the days of USB keys, um, store mass storage devices such as portable hard drives and uh, DVD burners and CD burners. It's important that this information is encrypted. The USB drives are very small and they can easily be lost or stolen and some companies do not have any type of policy uh, as to what information may be stored on these devices and it's easy for somebody to plug in a USB drive or any other type of media and just extract information off of it. So it's important that this information is encrypted so that only intended users can access it. Also, virus filtering and virus updates. It's important to verify that um, the virus software is functioning as necessary and virus updates are downloaded and applied and the latest virus def definitions are applied to each user workstation as well as servers and other technologies such as SQL Server, Exchange Server, and Lotus Domino. So first we looked at the importance of network security and also the different levels of network security within the corporate environment. Now let's look at some of the approaches to improve network security. First, it's testing and it's important to test and constantly test and reassess the um, security policies and the security procedures that are in place within your organization it's important that they accomplish what they were intended to accomplish and that's to keep intellectual property uh, account information customer information secure also remediation the remediation policies and the remediation procedures should be effective if a security outbreak or some kind of security weakness were to be exploited reviews and updates to security policy it's important to understand that the security landscape is constantly changing and constantly evolving and the security policy at your organization must change and evolve with it in a proactive manner. I remember just five years ago it was very uncommon for uh, organizations to have strong firewalls and intrusion detection systems as internet uh, prone viruses were not very common at the time Blaster was the first widespread common virus that just spread through the internet without any interaction from the user. Now a virus can easily exploit a, an unprotected system within a matter of seven seconds. So it's important to always update the security policy as needed to verify that it can protect against the most sophisticated attacks that are constantly evolving. And here's a look at some useful resources that you can use to find additional information with regards to network security. As always, you can visit our websites at boonbox.net and pcis.com for more information. Thank you for your participation in today's webinar. And now we open up the forum to questions and comments about network security. And as always, you can direct your questions related to network security to the DevFence and Boombox team at info at boombox.net or call 1-877-774-7558 and now we'll take your questions.